Hey guys, it's the Gomez Dillon right again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe by clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the Unity video, so we're going to be focusing on exporting an asset and bringing a new asset into another scene. The reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to be continuing the augmented reality videos. We're going to be bringing in an asset that I created in a different project called the Unity Procedural Generation Project and then bringing that asset into a new augmented reality scene. So what I want to do is I want to be able to place this asset which is going to be procedural in an entire scene and be able to change it with my finger and see it, how it looks in augmented reality. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. Alright guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing which is to place most of these folders into another folder because it's going to simplify the exporting process and also it's going to keep things organized. So if you remember what we're working on, this is the scene that is procedural. So I want to be able to use this scene and basically this implementation to do it in augmented reality. So to do that, I don't want to recreate or copy things. I want to export this as an asset. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my folder structure. And we're going to be looking at what we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. And then this one is going to be procedural generation. So if you have downloaded assets from the asset store, you probably notice when you do that, a lot of times it creates a folder and then it puts all of their assets into a folder. So that way it keeps things organized. So you know that that asset belongs to that folder. And then basically anything that is inside of that is what it needs for the, is, is required for that asset to run. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to be moving in the scripts. I'm going to be moving in the params, which are the scriptable objects. I'm going to be moving in the materials, also the editor, and also my scenes. We can also move the textures if we like to, which we're not really using right now, but we will in the future. And then as far as settings, the settings in this case, I won't move because this is using the lightweight rendering pipeline. I don't want to use the, the same pipeline for the augmented real, reality game. I could if I if I wanted to, but that to me would be independent. So and then the presets, I don't need to do anything there. So if you if you notice, everything should work. Like if I hit play, the scenes should still work. I should be able to go to grid with params and then basically modify the grid. I should be able to change the height and everything should be working. So that will be a step one, just basically getting your folder structure, you know, down and then organized. And, and the goal is to get everything into one folder so that it's easy to export. And not only easy to export, but when we export it and we import it into a new project, this is going to be the structure that the other project is going to have. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to assets and then I'm going to click on export package. And then this wizard right here is going to ask you, okay, what kind of things do you want to export in that package? So it's going to ask us to do, you know, the settings, if we wanted to do the settings, which I'm not going to do. And then most of everything, I'm going to collapse everything just to make sure we want to export. So the, the only thing that we don't want to export is the settings. So that looks good to me. You can also click on all, you can click on none. You can also tell it not to include dependencies if you like to, if, if some of those assets had other dependencies. I'm going to leave dependencies on because I'm not exporting the, you know, I'm not ex exporting a camera prefab that relies on, you know, some of these provision and profiles. So I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and hit export. And now we can tell it where we want to export the package to. I'm going to put the package in my desktop. And this one I'm going to name with the project name. So it's going to be Unity Procedural Generation. And we're just going to hit save. And for this package, it was really fast. But if you have a, you know, if you had a longer package with more images and assets and videos, then of course that will be a lot bigger. So what it does, it creates a Unity package. That's the extension. And then you can see the size is 4.3. And also the icon is the Unity icon. So this is a package that you can use now in another project. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. So let's go ahead and go into our Unity Hub and then let's go ahead and open it. It's going to ask me what kind of project I want to create in what version. So that's what I use the Unity Hub. So I'm going to click on New. 
And this is going to be the foundation project for the demo that I want to do on procedural generation in augmented reality. So I'm going to name it Unity AR Procedural Generation. And just keep in mind that just like all the other projects that I do, I'm going to put this one in GitHub as well so you can download it and try it on your own device. So this looks good to me. Let's go ahead and hit Create. And we could also just close out of this one. We don't need to have this project open. Just going to close that one. And we can probably close a couple of windows. We can leave the package there and also source control the terminal so that I can check everything in. All right, let's see where we are. Should still be creating the project. And there we go, importing assets. So, so this is pretty handy because, like I said, it, it allows you to not have to copy files manually, not have to copy images manually and models. With this way, you can even, you know, you could even do a pipeline where you do this automatically. The pipeline can package everything for you, export it. For now, I'm doing it manually. I think that's 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 okay for now. But if you had, you know, if you were making a lot of changes and you wanted to bring those changes into another project and that was going to be a repetitive event, you may want to look at automating that process or adding a menu that, that does this for you. All right, so I think we're good there. I'm going to, so now we have assets and this is basically an empty project. So let me go ahead and rename this scene because this is going to be the procedural, procedural generation. And we can hit reload and let me just call it procedural generation example. And we can name it, you know, as we need to on the on the other video. So I think that looks good. Let, let's go ahead and bring that new asset. So the way that it works is you go to the Unity package that you basically export it. You double click on it. It's going to decompress that package. And you can see that we, we can, we're seeing everything that we had in the procedural generation. So everything there looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And it's going to try to import everything that we exported. So you can see that now everything is you know, nice and clean. And I didn't have collisions with any other assets in here because I put everything into one folder. So what's cool about this is now I can go ahead and go into scenes and I can try you know, if the scenes that I work on work. And obviously we can, it's not working because the materials that we, that we had on the other one require a specific pipeline. So we can fix that by going to and changing some of these materials. So this is complaining by yeah the shader that is using. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna select the standard one. I'm actually gonna select the standard one on most of these ones. And we can just go ahead and there we go. And let me see why this one it's not okay. So that that one it's the let me make sure. Yeah, so that one's gonna be the materials that are inside the, so what I can do, is I can delete all these cells because they're gonna be generated again. We can hit delete. Now, the, and this is for my asset. This doesn't apply to your asset if, you don't, if you're not doing materials at runtime. So my asset is basically creating a material at runtime and it's looking up the shader by specifying this property right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to standard. And to be honest, I haven't tested this and looks like it is working, so that's really cool. And then let me just go ahead and zoom in so we can see more of it. And we are getting a little exception, so let me make sure. Okay, because the value, let me go ahead and regenerate this. It sounds like I do have an issue with the normals on this now that I'm using the standard shader. Let me go ahead and pull one of these aside. There we go, and see what's going on with it. Yeah, I think that it's issues with normals more than anything. And let me, yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll fix that in another video. But for the most part in this video, this is all working just fine. And if I, you know, if I resize, my asset is working and, and things are working great. So just keep in mind that you want to make sure that you keep everything into one folder, you keep everything organized. And then step two was to export, you know, you go to assets, click on export, and then select the dependencies that you want to be included. You want to include in the Unity package. 
Once you have that, you basically go to your new project or an existing project that you want to import it to. Double click on this asset, on this Unity package, and it's going to give you a wizard of what you need to do to import it, which is basically just select the assets that you want and then click on import. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also the link for early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.